Welcome to Jason Explains Things, everyone. I've got a really important set of off-road mods that I'm gonna be installing today on my 2021 Toyota 4Runner. These mods are gonna add more capability and safety, but also they're gonna look pretty awesome as well, so that's always nice. But before we get started, please give this video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, so you don't miss more awesome videos about cars and trucks, but tons of other fun things as well. The plan is to get these mods installed quickly and then hit a famous overlanding trail later today. So let's get started. So this 4Runner is a 2021 TRD off-road trim level, which is probably the best deal in an overlanding 4Runner in my personal opinion, but it lacks some of those really cool parts that you get on a TRD Pro. But luckily for us, they're really easy to add after the fact. The first mod for today is this guy. The TRD skid plate from Toyota themselves. This is made from quarter inch thick aluminum and it's powder coated silver. This one is tested by Toyota engineers to not interfere with engine cooling at all. Uh, you know, hence all of these nice vents. Also, this one still offers max protection, but it doesn't get in the way of common maintenance points. Now, forerunners like the SR5 and the off-road here do come with some uh, protection underneath. They do have a steel bash plate right here, but the shape of this one allows you to kind of slide over obstacles a lot better and also looks, right? <laughs> so I'm pretty happy and excited to put this guy on. The other mod today is we're gonna be adding rated recovery points from Apex Overland. Now these simply bolt onto factory holes so you're not gonna have to do any drilling to install these. They provide this large, strong uh, recovery point here to use hard or soft shackles or even a winch hook to recover your truck should you ever get stuck. These are rated at over 20,000 pounds of sheer load strength. Uh, the price was also very reasonable and most importantly, in my opinion, they're red. All right, well, let's get this old bash plate off and start installing our new off-road goodies. And just before we hit the trail later today, I've got one more little bonus mod, uh, really affordable, that I'm gonna do to the front end here to make it look even more awesome. All right, let's get some tools. All right, you're not gonna need this anymore, so you can just uh, throw it over there. Okay, so our old skid plate, really easy to remove. Just, uh, you need a 12 millimeter socket. Done and done. Okay, there's two more bolts you're gonna wanna remove. They're really easy to get at. They're right here in the front, right there and there. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about installing our recovery points. Uh, I've already actually gone ahead and already done the driver's side, so I kind of know exactly what I'm doing. First thing you want to do, there's a couple bolts that you're going to have to remove. You're going to have to remove the two 17 millimeter bolts that connect the sway bar, and I actually had to do both sides to get one side on because you got to wedge this little spot here in between the frame and then where the, uh, the, the sway bar bracket uh, bushing. Uh, you're going to want to loosen up both sides of the sway bar, then attach one side and then do the other. We got a couple different size bolts. Um, we got a, a 19 millimeter, two 17 millimeters, and then a 13 millimeter. Oh, and so yeah, you got to disconnect the sway bar and then also you got to disconnect a little bracket up here, which I think is a little cooling hose or something uh, right up here. So we'll do that. Uh, first and then we'll move on. There we go. Something I could have done to make that process a little bit easier is I could have left the other side of the sway bar uh, loose uh, and then kind of torqued both at the same time. So that might be a good idea um, to make that a little simpler. Nice, well with all four bolts in at least loosely, we can start tightening them all up. You wanna start with the largest one, the 19 millimeter, then actually do the 13 millimeter, and then the 17 millimeter bolts. And uh, you don't wanna to torque anything yet. Uh, I wanna save that for the end. Also, a really quick note about the recovery points themselves. Apex Overland sells two different versions, one for uh, rigs like my own with, uh, that do not have KDSS, 
and then versions that uh, are KDSS compliant. I think they cost the same, but it's a different version uh, of the recovery points for different types of forerunners, just so you know. Also, really quick, I wanna let you guys know, uh, my channel is small. I make videos about tons of different stuff. Recently, I've been doing some Forerunner videos and those have been doing pretty well. But uh, I did this video uh, that actually I posted last week that was really awesome. Uh, the Forerunner's in it for a second or two. <laughs> it's all about my friends and I going and climbing Mount St. Helens. It was a really awesome experience and a really fun video. And the YouTube algorithm is burying it. But it's a really great video. I'm gonna link it up in a card above. So if you wanna check that out, please do. It would, uh, it would, it, would, it would bring warmth to my soul. So anyway, that new skid plate and those recovery points look awesome. I got one quick little mod uh, at the very end here before we pack up and hit the trails. I'm gonna be adding uh, some fog light covers. These are uh, yellow amber fog light covers from Laminex. This will give me that look as if I have Baja Designs, uh, you know, awesome off-road uh, LED fog lights, but only for $17. Um, but Baja Designs, if you want to uh, work with me and uh, maybe give me a discount or something, I can uh, do an install video for those Squadron SAE lights. I really want to get those. And uh, I don't think there's one video on YouTube about installing those on a Toyota. I don't think it exists yet, so this would be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's put these on. All right, we are on the Washington backcountry discovery route, or at least a portion of it. We're heading between Yakima to Ellensburg, all on trail roads, and we're gonna have some fun. Now, a really cool video you guys might have missed on the channel is installing a GMRS overlanding radio uh, in this uh, Forerunner and also in a Chevy Colorado ZR2. So check that out. It's pretty good. But hey, I hope this gave you some ideas for your uh, Toyota Forerunner. Whether you have an SR5, an off-road like mine, or, or anything, you know these mods, you know, add some of the coolness of a TRD off-road. But you save so much money, you get to do it yourself. Uh, you don't have to pay dealer markups when you buy the thing. And I think it's just cooler to add things yourself as you want to. Well, I have tons of other videos on the channel about cars and trucks, but also tons of other fun things. Uh, DIY projects, home improvement, adventures, tons of stuff. So go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, God bless, and don't forget to do it yourself. I'm gonna go that way. Uh... <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Too fast for the forerunner. Ah! <laughs> oh, pavement. So boring. Oh, pavement. Gross. So boring. For waffles.